All right, sticks and hacks. Today, I'm gonna review my Hawks Creek round in the US Am Tour tournament. I'm gonna go through what I did well, what I didn't do well. If you watched the first two videos, then you saw that I played really well on the front, not so well on the back, and it was kind of this series of micro mistakes that I made that got me into trouble and I made some bad bogeys. So we're gonna kind of review that, see what you can get out of it, how to use Par Golf's advanced analytics to kind of understand what you did well and didn't do well, so that next time, I can finish a little stronger and hopefully win that golf tournament. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel so I can help you with your course management. So to review a round I've already played, let's go look at the round summary first. I'm gonna hit history, I wanna look at Hawks Creek, and let's look at the summary to get the high level stats. So right away you see that I shot a 75, so I was three over, that's a pretty good round, but I was one under through the front nine and then shot a 40 on the back. That's a pretty disappointing finish to my round. And if you look at the top, you'll see my mental scorecard where I only committed to 74% of the shots. And watching those videos back, you'll see that I was way more committed on the front nine than I was on the back nine. On the back nine, I made a series of mistakes. I got distracted by other players. I got distracted by my allergies and the sniffles. Runny nose got me. I got distracted by a few bad lies. I really let my surroundings kind of impact me on that back nine, where I did a much better job on the front nine. Digesting that, it's typically off the tee where I struggle the most with the scorecard. That's the case here. I was only committed to 64% of my tee shots. That could be better. I need it to be better. Scrolling down, I only hit nine greens. So to shoot a 75 only hitting nine greens, that is a pretty good score. I putted well, I got up and down well. I could hit more greens. More greens would make the round easier. All right, strokes gained. This is probably one of the most important sections that I like to look at, and on the day, it was kind of a mixed bag. Your handicap reference here, you can set to whatever makes sense for you. For me, I compare myself to a scratch handicap. In this case, I lost a third of a stroke to a scratch handicap with my driver. That's not bad, that's a pretty good driving day, but I did have one penalty and multiple recovery shots. We'll get into that in a minute. On the approach side of things, that's where I did most of my damage. I lost 2.6 strokes to a scratch handicap with irons. I typically do lose strokes to a scratch handicap with approach, but that's more than I want to be losing. I made up for a lot of those shortcomings with the putter. Gaining 2.3 strokes with the putter is huge, and you'll see multiple highlights when we get to putting of big putts that I made that kept some momentum up in this round. Otherwise, the wheels could have come off and I probably would have been more in the 78 kind of range. One thing, if you're not used to looking at this kind of data, it might be a little overwhelming. I like the tips. So if you subscribe at a perform level or above, you'll get these tips that kind of digest the data for you and tell you in this case, I did really well putting, I struggled with my approach game, that's where I can really improve. As we scroll down, you'll see the deep dive into each of those topics so you can really understand what you can do better with par golf. So let's start with driving. On the day, as I showed earlier, I lost a third of a stroke to a scratch handicap with my driver. If you look at it, my dispersion wasn't too bad, but I did make three mistakes looking here in the bottom right. I had one penalty and two recovery shots. Each time, those led to bogeys. I gotta be better at that. If you get yourself in position off the tee, the rest of the hole is easier. I did hit the ball fairly long. I averaged 257 yards, which on this course, I hit a lot of non-drivers. You'll see that I only hit driver nine times. I hit my two hybrid a couple times and my four iron a couple of times. So good average. Uh, when I did miss the fairway, I tended to miss to the right. So that's something to be aware of. I blocked a few shots, at least one getting me into a recovery situation. Um, and then I did hook a few left late in the round. Again, if you look at the driving tips, it'll tell me that I drove like a 0.8 handicap today. That's great. Right now I'm playing at about a one handicap. So that makes sense from a driving perspective. And again, where I really need to work is to clean up on those mistakes. We scroll down a little further to the approach section. This is where I lost 2.6 strokes to a scratch handicap. So I should pay special attention here to where I'm giving those strokes away. And if I look at it, I hit eight out of 15 greens when I had a chance. So when I didn't have a penalty or recovery, those shots are removed. I had 15 opportunities and only 53% of the time did I hit the green. Now, if you add my near greens, there are two of those, I hit 10 out of 15. So not all bad. I left myself some easy up and downs, but you'll see that I tended to miss short and left when I did miss left. That's, those are areas that I can clean up. At an approach level, I played more like a four handicap with my irons. So I'm about to scratch with my driver. I'm more like a four handicap with my irons. That's really where I need to get better if I wanna take the next leap in my golf game. Short game, so I did have quite a few attempts. I had 11 attempts with my short game. Uh, that's shots inside 75 yards, and I averaged 13 feet, so I did have a pretty good short game day. 
um, especially from the fairway. Not a lot to gain from my short game in this case. My short game was pretty good. I did have one two chip. That cost me a bogey where I was uncommitted and tried to hit a flop shot and just didn't have enough speed to really get it to where it needed to go. Other than that, my short game was pretty good. If you remove that one shot, my short game would have been great, but that one shot was costly. Next, if we scroll down to putting. So putting, I gained 2.3 strokes on a scratch handicap. That's great for me, that's great on any day, I'll take it, that's more or less putting like a pro. And in this case, I made 85 feet of putts, the average tour pro makes 72 feet, so I did make more than a tour pro would have made on this day. A few long ones, and I was excellent on the short range ones, right? 14 out of 14 on putts inside six feet, that's phenomenal. And then four out of 10 on medium length putts is really good, 40%. And I made a couple of key momentum saving bombs. Uh, putter was really hot and really kept this round going when the wheels came off a little bit there on the back nine. So pretty happy with that. My big takeaway here is I need to work on the approach game and the driving when I get tired. Right now, this is not breaking down strokes gain on the front nine and the back nine, but one thing you can do is go look at the scorecard heat map to kind of see how you did front versus back. And that's very important in this particular round. What you'll see on the front is that I hit five greens, I hit five fairways, um, and if you look at the strokes gained heat map, it's a lot of green on the front nine. I hit a lot of good shots. I did have a poor approach shot on the first hole where really I chose a bad target. I aimed more or less at the flag and ended up hitting it over the green. I probably should have played a little bit more to the right of the flag, taken some yardage off of it, and I would have had a better chance to get on that green. That led to a bogey and put me short-sided in a bad spot. Outside of that, the only really bad shots I had on the front nine were on the sixth hole. I blocked a tee shot under a tree. That cost me a stroke because I had to punch out from a recovery situation, didn't get up and down and made bogey. And then on seven, I did not commit to hitting the right side of the green, pulled it into that bowl, which led to my bad short game. So outside of those couple of shots, I really played well on the front nine, and that comes across. I gained 0.5 strokes on the front nine versus scratch handicap, gained 0.2 strokes with the irons, and gained 1.4 strokes putting. So overall, I gained two strokes on a scratch handicap on the front nine. I was killing it, feeling like I'm in control of the tournament. And then what happened? We got to the back nine, and on the back nine, I stuffed it on number 10, but then the wheels started coming off once we got to 11. I hit a okay drive on the right hand side, but then my allergies started really acting up. I was walking and pushing my cart. It was 103 degrees. I started getting tired and I pulled my approach shot on the 11th hole, missed that green, had a long putt from the fringe that I didn't get close enough and I ended up making bogey on 11. Followed that up by standing on the tee box of 12. There's a player in the fairway, in my way, and instead of waiting for him to move so I could have a clear mind hitting that golf shot, I tried to rush it. I felt like we were falling a little bit behind from a pace of play perspective, and I hit that tee shot before my mind was clear. I was still thinking about the player in my fairway, and your subconscious kind of guides you to be protective, and I blocked that tee shot to make sure I went nowhere near him, knocked it into the trees, and had a tough recovery shot that I then complicated and turned that into a bad bogey. That's a simple fix. Just wait another 30 seconds for that player to walk off of your fairway, and now you're free and clear hitting that golf shot. So I'm sure you find yourself in situations where the beverage cart is pulling up, or there's a player in your way, or your friends haven't finished making that joke, and you rush yourself into hitting a golf shot before you're ready, and you hit a poor one. A lot of times we get kind of caught up in not wanting to be a slow player hitting a shot too soon, but I can tell you, your pace of play is impacted worse when you hit a shot into the force that you got to go look for versus taking that extra 30 seconds to make sure you have a clear mind and hit a good shot. So I always encourage you to think about that. If you're distracted and your mind wanders from what you're about to do, you should back up, go back through your routine and hit the golf shot. The more committed you are and the more you practice, the quicker you can do that and the better you'll be able to tune out all of that noise. But if you do get bothered, back off. It will save you time and you'll hit a better shot. I did a poor job of that on this day. So that was a bogey on the 12th hole. On the 13th hole, I played too conservative. You got the fairway, and I was purposely trying to hit it down the right to avoid the left-hand side. I did a good job of hitting it to the right, but I ended up with a poor lie with a weed behind the ball, and that's all I could think about, taking the club head back. So again, a little distracted. I'm afraid I'm gonna chunk it. I do chunk it. Ended up getting up and down there and saving par, but I made that a lot more difficult than it needed to be, and the putter bailed me out. The 14th hole 
is a little bit of an aberration. When I stood on that tee, I had a good idea. I ended up just choosing the wrong club, but it was a well executed shot. I hit it in the middle of the fairway. In fact, I liked it all the way down through the fairway. The ball just didn't stop rolling. The ground's firm. We've been in a drought in Texas. That ball rolled 40 yards into a hazard, and I just didn't expect that result. What I should have done was hit a four iron and been a little more conservative. It wasn't a bad swing. Uh, it wasn't a bad decision even. It was just the wrong club and a little bit of an unlucky bounce. That cost me a bogey. I did well not to complicate that and try to play the shot out of the hazard and made sure it was just a bogey and not a double. So you can learn from that. Don't make matters worse by trying to do too much once you've already made one mistake. Once you've made a mistake, get out, get back in position, and do your best to minimize the damage to your scorecard. And over the long run, that will benefit you and you'll shoot lower scores. After that mistake, I really got the wheels back on, played well, as you see on this heat map. Um, lots of green there until we get to the 18th hole. And the 18th hole, I hit a mediocre tee shot into the wrong fairway and made a huge mental mistake there. At that time, I'm two over. I feel like I'm in the tournament. I feel like somewhere around one or two over is gonna win that golf tournament. And I tried to force the issue. I tried to hit a three wood over the trees that probably needed to cut and tried to force a draw in there, ended up hitting it in the bunker. And then you have a 70 yard bunker shot that's very difficult. Uh, tried to kind of skinny it to not catch it fat and actually bladed it into the lip. Then it buries and now you're in a lot of trouble. But the mistake was not even the tee shot, the mistake was the three wood from the fairway. I did not need to force it over those trees. I could have hit a five iron into the other fairway and I would have had an easy wedge onto the green, guaranteed a par and probably had a putt at birdie. Instead, I had to make a 15 footer just to save bogey and ended up missing the playoff by one. On the whole, I ended up losing two and a half strokes to a scratch handicap on the back nine after gaining two strokes on the front. So I gave it all back being a little rushed and not taking my time, being distracted by the elements, other players, my allergies, whatever it was, I was not near as mentally focused on that back nine as it was on the front. I think a little bit of that is fatigue, walking in 103 degrees, pushing your cart up and down those hills, trying to keep up. I did get a little fatigued. I need to work on that. Maybe some golf fitness in there as well, but it was really those micro mental mistakes. There wasn't a single shot in this round that cost me a bogey. It was all of these little things where you hit a drive a little bit out of position and then you don't quite get it back in position and then you're on the green with a long putt and you try a little too hard to make it and run it by. It's all these little things that end up adding up to those bogeys that hurt me in this case. When all said and done, this was my first tournament in four or five months. To shoot 75 and be in contention and just miss the playoff is a good feeling. I felt really in control of my golf game. Uh, just a few wild shots, a few bogeys here and there. Get those cleaned up and I will be in great position for the next one. You can easily extract all that information from the Par Golf app. I can use all that information to play better in my next round. And really analyzing your course management like this, finding the trends where you make mistakes or where you try to do too much, is where you're gonna really start shaving shots off of your rounds. Using the Par Golf analytics after my round and just a few minutes of going over what I did and reminding myself, okay, this is when you made that decision, really pays off because the next time I'm in that position, I can be a little better, I can start to improve my mental game as well as working on the range and working on my shots and working on my ability to hit the golf ball. So it's very important to not just play the physical part of the game and hitting the golf ball, but the mental part of the game and realizing when you make those bogeys, why did you make those bogeys and what could you do better next time? Par golf helps with all of that. So start tracking your shots and you'll improve your scores. If you haven't already, like and subscribe for more content.